You bring your phone everywhere. Work, school, the movies. Now you can bring it to an Xfinity store for an easy way to switch to Xfinity Mobile, a new kind of network designed to save you money. You can get up to five lines of talk and text included with Xfinity Internet at no extra cost. So all you pay for is data. It's never been easier to switch to Xfinity Mobile and keep the phone you love. Click here to see how. Sorry, I gotta take this. Restrictions apply. Limited to select mobile phones. Requires activation of a new line of Xfinity Mobile. Up to five devices per account. New Xfinity Internet customers limited to up to two lines pending activation of Internet service. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post. Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker. Somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building. We've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, everybody. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Well, let's be honest with ourselves. The number of American citizens who care about liberty, individualism, the Constitution, specifically the Bill of Rights, is shrinking. These politicians <coughs> are coming up with more and more proposals to degrade the Second Amendment because apparently more and more people want them to. Now, there's a lot of reasons for this, of course. People want easy solutions. They want utopia. The media, completely in the tank for the progressive agenda. And so when you get a big lie, and it's repeated again and again and again, it has consequences on the population. But the fact of the matter is, however we got here, a smaller and smaller percentage of the American people believe in liberty. So we have a problem on our hands. It's not just when it comes to the Second Amendment either. When it comes to the Constitution, period. More and more people want free things. Well, there's nothing in the Constitution that gives more and more people free things. And there's nothing in the Constitution that empowers Congress a president, the bureaucracy or the courts, to give more and more people free things. And the way we get here <clears throat> is really through deceit and dishonor, as the Supreme Court's ruling on Obamacare, utter deceit and dishonor. Believe it or not, the Supreme Court's ruling on Social Security in the 1930s, putting aside the program, we don't need to debate that. Absolute deceit. If people want these things, that is, more and more gun control, more and more debt, more and more redistribution of wealth, isn't it amazing they still don't have the two-thirds that they need in the House and the Senate to propose amendments? So I think we're outnumbered. I think our numbers are shrinking, those of us who understand the purpose of this society and its founding. Doesn't mean it's too late, but it's getting late. But we now have the very government the founders were concerned about. When you read Madison's notes, over and over and over again, they're trying to craft a provision here, a provision there, a structure, a system to protect the revolution, to protect the cause of the revolution, to protect the principles in the revolution. We don't even talk about them anymore. I do, but most people don't. We're told you must be a purist. Get over conservatism. What has it ever accomplished? What has it ever accomplished? Conservatism is nothing but the foundation's principles. It's accomplished everything. Everything. But as I wrote in Ameritopia near the end, the seeds of tyranny are born from liberty. And I'm going to have this discussion with Walter Williams to some extent, too, on Sunday. I really hope you watch Sunday Fox, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, and you'll know the times. See, this is a puzzle we can't really figure out. Great societies, great empires have risen and have fallen. Because within liberty, evil people, I'm not just talking about Horrific mass murders, evil people, seizing the reins of power, 
do evil things. Not all at once. A little here, a little there, and then it adds up. That's exactly what's going on. The President of the United States gave a really great speech today. Went over an hour. Most of what he said I agree with, but some of what he said I don't agree with. And there he is in the lap of Ronald Reagan's CPAC. CPAC was founded for the purpose of wrenching control from the Republican Party, from the establishment, by the conservative movement, in order to nominate Ronald Reagan. That's the founding history of CPAC. When the President of the United States, when the Governor of Florida, when both Senators of Florida, when it is now common talk among Republicans that you ought to prevent young men and young women who are 18, 19, or 20 years old from purchasing a rifle. I'm appalled. I'm shocked. I'm disgusted. I keep saying, and at some point it will reverberate, if that's the case, then there is no moral basis for telling people who are 18, 19, or 20 years old that they can be subject to a draft or that they qualify to serve overseas in combat holding a weapon. When you paint a broad brush of an entire generation like that, it's repulsive to me. When that subhuman mass murder in Las Vegas killed 59 people, he was 64 years old. Did you hear that? Nobody over 65, nobody over 60 should be able to purchase rifles. You didn't hear that, did you? The mass murder in Orlando. He wasn't 18 or 19 or 20 years old. The mass murder at Fort Hood. He wasn't 18, 19 or 20 years old. And look at each one of those situations. In Fort Hood, military personnel prohibited from carrying weapons unless they're on duty. The most asinine policy imaginable. Look at Orlando. The mass murderer there was on the FBI's radar. They even spoke to him several times. But then he dropped. He dropped out. And now look at this disaster in Florida. Disaster. The tape is now out of this coward, this deputy sheriff, who was really hiding. He didn't take a position until the shooting was over. And I must say, the local sheriff there has some answering to do. His office, the sheriff's office in Broward County, had multiple contacts with this would-be mass murder. And, of course, the FBI dropped the ball. Not once, but twice. And here we are talking about denying the Second Amendment to 18, 19, and 20 years olds. Based on what? Is there some study, some evaluation, that they're more likely to slaughter people than others? I've been looking all day. You won't find it. But statistics don't matter when you're being railroaded, ladies and gentlemen, when you're being indoctrinated. When you're being told there's no other position but this position, that Washington must do something. The same Washington that has destroyed our financial state in this country with massive debt and yearly deficits. The same Washington that robs the Social Security Trust Funds and Medicare Trust Funds to spend today on general operating activity. The same Washington that won't secure the border and uphold our immigration laws, and watches as cities declare they're nullifying federal immigration law. They call themselves sanctuary cities, where criminals go. Yes, the same Washington that trashes police officers, the same Washington that undermines the United States military, the same Washington that refuses to adhere to the Constitution, now their answer to this mass killer in Florida is to punish the American people. Their answer is to do through the back door what they cannot do through the front door when it comes to amending the Constitution. And that is start to classify people. Start to put them in the groups 
whether it's based on age or mental health. There's many people in this country who need assistance on mental health reasons. And the vast majority of them are kind, decent, wonderful members of a family. And now they're all stereotyped. They're all stereotyped. Because the FBI blew it, and I'm going to tell you now, the Broward County Sheriff's Office, they blew it. That deputy sheriff blew it. Now we go back to the propaganda. Now we're going to legislate based on the propaganda. We never expand our freedoms in this country. We never expand our freedoms in this country. We don't look at the Bill of Rights and say, let's get as close to the original meaning as possible. No. We go the opposite direction. Because the progressive left, in the end, is a tyrannical bunch. You see it on display more and more. You saw it with Antifa. You saw it with Black Lives Matter. You saw it with CNN. Just two days ago, the way Jake Tapper totally lost control of that arena, probably intentionally so, a stacked audience, stacked audience, stacked questions. And CNN says it defends the First Amendment. CNN doesn't defend the First Amendment. It abuses it for self-promotion, for ratings, and for financial gain. And so here I stand, yes, I'm standing, watching this debate over the Second Amendment. And the interesting thing is, there is no debate over the Second Amendment. Now the debate is just how far will these federal politicians go? And some of the cowards in these states... Just how far will they go to eviscerate the Second Amendment? We have more gun controls in this country today than ever in American history. Did you know that? At the federal, state, and local level, we have more gun control in this country than ever in the history of this country. What we don't have are competent government entities. And every time they screw up, a little bit of your freedom is lost. I'll be right back. Mud Lovin. I want you to listen to how disgusting the progressive left has become. The worse the tragedy, more disgusting they are. Here's this Van Jones. He's a communist, conservative. So, oh, I like Van Jones. I don't like him in the least. Here he was on CNN last night. Cut five, go. Let me try to lay out for you know, what I think the concern is with the idea that we be adding guns to that environment. You know, Ken, you're pointing out the positives. The positive are maybe somebody would use that gun well sure. and stop a, 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 an intruder. There are some real negatives as well. You know, African-American and Latino kids already get treated fairly badly in schools as it is. They're more likely to be seen as a threat. They're more likely to be expelled, more likely to be suspended for the exact same behavior. Videotape the exact same behavior. All right, so stop. So why don't we break up? This is what I don't understand. These edifices are created by the left, and they're controlled by the left. The NEA and the AFT controls our school systems. The left controls almost every school system in the country. The curriculum, the assemblies, the holidays, the food, the school lunch program. From the administration on down, there are exceptions. I got it. Don't call me and tell me your exception. I believe you. There are. But the vast majority of them, the rule is the rule. So now these, these edifices that have been created by the left, these government schools, we're told, are absolutely systemically racist against blacks and Latinos. And yet with Landmark Legal Foundation where I used to be president, now I'm just chairman, but when we used to go into court and fight in state courts and federal courts for school choice, so kids, poor kids, mostly poor black kids and Hispanic kids, could go to their neighborhood schools or a different school 
We were fought by the NEA, the AFT, 